this. All right, y'all. Look, <laughs> Mr. Living Oche, we got to talk, guys, because I'm not getting too many assignments back from you guys. Uh, Peace to everybody. Uh, I know y'all on spring break right now. This is video three of five for uh, language e uh, <laughs> for language arts test prep. Um, yeah, man. Uh, shout out to to Gabby because she did the entire assignment top to bottom. Uh, I got some emails from people. I got some people reaching out saying they're watching the uh, the tutoring videos, but I'm not getting a lot of assignments back, guys. That being said, why do you read, right? Uh, I mean, you already know why you read. You read because you have to read in order to uh, receive communication via language. And a lot of you guys read, like I do presently, uh, on the internet, right? We read on Facebook. We read uh, descriptions uh, for things that we're looking at for products. Uh, every once in a blue moon, you might even look something up and read an essay, an article about something. Uh, you know, I'm guessing it's not going to be scholastic in nature, but you read. Uh, unfortunately for you, unfortunately for you, is that you came after the internet. See, old man Livinoche, I came before the internet, so I had to read before the internet. So I know when somebody's spelling the word you, it's not spelled just like the letter U. You know what I mean? I know that OMG is not acceptable to write inside something for school. Um, you may not know that, or you may know that and not care because you're so used to communicating that way. Let's start right off the top, right? When you read something on the internet and it's got OMG in it, it's got L-M-F-A-O, whatever, you know what I'm saying, L-O-L, just, you know, you might as well just say, all right, Sadie, you have a little voice in your head that says, what I'm reading here is not very beneficial for me. You can keep reading it if you want to, but at least know it's being written by a child or by an adult who writes like a child. Sorry, guys. Uh, and, you know, it's informal. It's something that's informal. So if you're an adult and you're writing that way, I mean, that's cool, but it's not acceptable, you know, in the world of academia to write that way and if you're reading something it's typically not like upper level thinking stuff right so just just go into it with that knowledge uh, so anyway uh, why do you read I mean the one the one reason you read is to get the heck out of Trenton uh, or out of New Jersey that's what I did I, I spent mad years in New Jersey and the only way that till I've gotten to my 20s and I could actually do some traveling uh, the only way I really got out of Jersey was through books or through articles or through video games, right? You choose games that got a lot of story content and you turn the subtitles on, right? And you read the subtitles as they're flashing across the screen, that is gonna build your muscles up a little bit. So that's just a little way. Another way you can do it is click on some informational links. When you're on Facebook or you're, or you're reading something, you, you know, don't spend all the time pollying with your friends like, oh, we're gonna fight, oh, fight after school. You guys are like a whole bunch of teenage Russell Crows, you know what I mean? Beating each other over the head with stuff and then reporting to people on Facebook about it. Waste of time, guys. You're not gonna get into college that way. You're not gonna pass your test that way. Uh, but, but, you know, the little time you spend on the internet, devote some of that time to reading about something you're interested in. Before we get into this, I mean, it's important that you understand that, uh, that, you know, you're being set up to fail right off the top. So as soon as you accept that you're being set up to fail, and uh, it's up to you, you're the only person who can change the way that things have been set up for you, uh, then, you know, then you're all the better to, uh, to deal with the circumst circumstances at hand. Just based on the people, because, I mean, I've been hearing I don't got a teacher, based on the people that responded with the assignment, I'm already tell I, I can already tell that, that you're not serious, the, the, the large group of you, you know? But I said, my word is my bond, so I said I would do five videos to help prepare you, and this is number three, and I'll do four and five, too. Um, and I'm going to try to walk you through this. But, you know, if you do the knowledge to this, and you try to take these strategies and employ them, you're going to do better. Uh, if you don't, you know, if you just kind of blow it off, you know, and, and you know, just don't, just please understand, please understand at the end of the day, when you, you know, if you do poorly on the test, you get placed in another class, do poorly on another test, all those kind of things, all those things add up. And, and there are consequences for them. Even if you're not getting graded for, for something, uh, there's consequences for not caring. And you might, and you know, the worst part about it is kind of like a pain that doesn't hurt right away. It's like if you fall on the floor and you scrape your knee, you feel that right away. But the kind of pain that you go through for not taking your education seriously, that comes later. That comes later and it hurts worse, right? And it never stops hurting. It never stops hurting. You know, for example, like if you look at jail, right? They take, they take a look at people's, at students' fourth grade, fourth grade records and see who's failing by the time they're in fourth grade. They look at people that drop out in their, their freshman and sophomore year of high school and they base how much toilet paper and how much paper towels that they put into the jail for the following upcoming years based on the dropout rate, okay? So, I, I mean, essentially all these institutions work together. You know, you're being tested on something very specific. This is reading comprehension. It's how well you understand what you've read. 
I've already broke it down for you that there's really three parts to that process, right? You have to do the knowledge first, and then you have to act on it, and then you're going to be left with a clear understanding, right? And so, first, the knowledge you can do is what are you being tested on? Uh, there's a couple of elements. There's speed, there's uh, how, much, how fast you can complete the assignment on the test, there's your attention span. How much attention can you pay to something while, you, while you're reading it so that you can digest the themes of that literature? Uh, so you're getting correct information and not making mistakes, right? And uh, flexibility. How flexible are you as a student? So, I mean, you can understand this and, and this type of information and narrative, but can you understand instructional information? Um, problem solving. Sometimes they're going to ask you to take the information that you've read and try to compare and contrast different parts of that information and come up with a solution to a problem they're going to present for you in multiple choice question form or open-ended question form. And lastly, and very importantly, is your memory. And those are my students that know, uh, that have gone through the process of memorization, how important that is. Um, you know, your memory's already, you've already built those muscles up, so you're going to be uh, quite prepared for that portion of it, the memory portion, which is going to ask you to observe details in the reading and, and retain them for later. You can always go back to the text. If they say go back to the text, go back to paragraph four, blah, blah, blah. Go back to paragraph four. Don't just assume that your memory is, is, is good enough off the bat for you to just call it up, because that's how people make mistakes. Multiple choice questions usually have four or five possible answers, all right? First of all, one, there's going to be a throwaway answer, an answer that just doesn't make sense, an answer that, that couldn't make sense, and that's a throwaway. So you automatically eliminate one answer right out of four or five. The answer, the correct answer is right in front of you. You just got to figure out and discern which one it is. So there's a throwaway answer. Then there's, of course, going to be the right answer. All right, so now we've taken two. We've eliminated two, and you've got two or three more possibilities you gotta, you got to wade through. Um, one is going to be a general answer of some kind, just something, a blanket answer. And it looks like at first glance it could be right if you didn't read carefully, so you got to be careful of that answer. And then, of course, there's two answers that detract. The thing you want to keep in mind is you always, always, always answer your questions, okay? Because if you got four multiple choice questions and you just leave it blank, you got a 100% chance of getting that wrong. But if you select one, even if you're not sure, you got a 25% chance of getting that right. And if you go through another method, which is process of elimination, like if you look at four possibilities for a question you're trying to answer and it's multiple choice, and you take away one of those possibilities and guess out of the other three, because you you don't know, then you're getting a 75, you're getting a 25% chance, and that goes up to like a 33.3% chance that you're gonna get the answer right just by guessing, right? And then if you can and then if you can eliminate two answers and you're not sure, you're stuck about is it this one or that one, is it C or D, and you circle one of those two, now you've got a 50% chance of getting it right when you could have just left it blank and had a 100% chance of getting it wrong. All right, so a couple of things that you got to keep in mind. Make sure you read carefully. If you got to skim a little bit where you feel like you've got the gist, that's okay as long as you're willing to go back later. If you want to take a quick glance at the questions before you start your reading, that's okay as long as it's not a long glance and as long as it's, that's not the, the primary way that you're answering questions by looking at questions and trying to fish out the answers. I can tell you off the bat, that's the easiest way to do it and it doesn't work, okay? There's no free lunch, there's no shortcuts, all right? You got to actually go, go and read through that selection. Um, so, speed, flexibility, attention, problem solving, and memory. All those things are required and all those things are going to be tested. Strategies for multiple choice questions, keep in mind that the answer is in front of you. Keep in mind that there's a throwaway answer. Keep in mind that there's going to be like a general answer, just something basic. And then there's going to be a couple answers where you've got to make a distinction and figure out which one's the right one. All right, as long as you, as long as you keep these strategies in mind and you go into the test, you read your directions, you maybe skim the questions really quick, but then you genuinely with full attention, read the selection, and then you go to your questions, and you keep your keep an awareness of your time, okay? Because I know how y'all are. You know, if it's about when you're fighting outside or something, you're gonna know what time it is, right? You know, this is a fight too, and the only difference is, is really, you know, you, you, for for once you're fighting for something that's a fight worth taking and a fight worth having. Because uh, a lot of people are gonna want to make you think that it's okay to not do well on these things, give you a pat on the back, a reassuring pat on the back. But the truth of the matter is, is that five mi miles away from where you're standing, they're excelling at these tests. And they're going to compete with you. When y'all become adults, they're going to be your boss. Unless you step up to the plate, and unless you take this seriously and figure out a little path for you to take, a path that's going to put you in a good position, they're going to end up being your boss. So unless you want to determine who's your boss now, and that boss is five miles away, and that boss is a child too, and they're looking at their tests, and they know this information, and they're going to take the test seriously, and they're going to prepare for it, and they've got the tools to do it. 
you know? It's not fair that you don't have the tools or as many tools to do it. You know what? That doesn't make the little teeny itsy bitsy bit of difference, okay? Fair doesn't even come into the equation, okay? So I'm trying to give y'all as much ammunition as you can get. Uh, please hit me with questions if you have questions. I'm gonna teach y'all how to answer open-ended questions next. If you wanna do a little bit of practicing, I'm sure there's some materials in the classroom or around, and especially on the internet. I've got a plethora of resources for you to go and check out some practice tests to see how you do on multiple choice questions before your test is presented to you. I mean, you got, you, you got the, the notes to take. Please pause me. Uh, take down those terms that I put I presented for you guys and if you have questions, please hit me up But I just want to remind you all one last time that everything's not gonna be okay, man You've got a mountain in front of you You got a huge mountain in front of you that you got to climb right at the end of the day I got your back and uh, and if you and if you need help with this, please hit me up I'll, I'll do whatever I can to help you out. All right. I love y'all be good uh, Be smart enjoy your spring enjoy your spring vacation and make sure that you, you carve out a little bit of time for this because it's coming it's coming, and, and I hate to be a bummer, but I do want to motivate you guys to take it seriously because it's, it's breathing down your neck, you know, it's chasing you. And even if you refuse to look at it, it's still there, all right? Peace.